Hello dear students, welcome to the next session of Living World. So let's start with the discussion of some special points or very important aspects which are necessary only for the competitive examination like NEET. So in previous class we were discussing regarding the genus, right? There are two type of genera or the genus are there. What are those means? Some are monotypic genus or the genera and some genera or the genus are polytypic. What do you mean by monotypic and what is the meaning of polytypic here? The monotypic means such a genera they have only one species in them. They have only one species of organisms in them or under them. Such genera are called as a monotypic genera or the monotypic genus. Similarly, polytypic means here, these polytypic genus or genera, they have more than one or more than two or more than one or two species, species in them. Then they are called as polytypic genera or the polytypic genus. Let us see what are the example for the monotypic genera and then the polytypic genera. See <coughs> the example for the monotypic genera includes here. Say for example genera called as king ginkgo which includes only one species of organisms in it that is nothing but the biloba. So ginkgo is a genus name that includes only one species in it that is a biloba or the biloba species. So it nothing but it represent a gymnosperm. It is the scientific name of a gymnosperm and the gymnosperm belongs to a species called as a biloba. This species comes under the genus called as a ginkgo. So here this ginkgo includes only one species that is nothing but the biloba. So here <coughs> this ginkgo as it contains only one species so it is called as monotypic genera or the monotypic genus. Can you give another example, one more example for monotypic genus means we can take example of human species also which belongs to a genus that is also monotypic in nature. The next one is Homo. Next one is Homo. Homo is a genus which includes only one species in it. Homo is a genus which includes which includes only one living species in it only one living species that is sapiens that is nothing but the sapiens so sapiens represent which organisms sapiens are nothing but humans that is the scientific name of human being is nothing but scientific name of human being is homo sapiens nothing but human beings so we belong to a genus called as homo in which no other species is included or added so homo is also a monotypic genus ginkgo is also monotypic genus Let's see the examples of polytypic genera or the polytypic genus. So, what is the example for the polytypic genera? So, here the example for polytypic genera is, for example, nothing but the genus called as or the genera called as canis. Genera called canis. So this canis includes this canis which includes 
more than one species which includes more than one species so what are those species are involved here more than one species say for example canis familiaris do anyone remember which organism this scientific name is representing canis familiaris means what is the name of that organism canis familiaris represent which organism nothing but your canis familiaris is nothing but a dog okay similarly canis lupus it represents a wolf it is representing wolf so here in both examples the canis is the common right so here canis is a genus name familiaris and lupus is a species name so same genus includes more than one species here right like that one more is there that is canis canis aureus so what this canis aureus represent okay so it is nothing but canis aureus is nothing but say for example we can write it like this canis aureus this one represents a fox this one represents fox so the dog wolf and fox all these three different species of organisms belongs to the same genera which is nothing but canis so canis is a polytypic genus of the polytypic genera understood guys so in this way the genus are of two types of the generic genera are of two types one is monotypic and other one is polytypic monotypic means which includes only one living species or single living species of organisms example ginkgo and then the homo so under the ginkgo only biloba species of gymnosperms are present under the homo only sapiens that is nothing but the humans are included so these two are the examples of monotypic genera and canis is the example of the polytypic genera remember this is important or this one is on this discussion or this information is only for the neat examination but not even for the cet also is it clear guys make a note of these points now later we will discuss regarding another category that is family the next uh, taxonomic category is nothing but the family so what do you mean by family how can you define a family in taxonomic hierarchy so family is a group of individuals which contains father mother sister brother right either is called as family or a group of human beings which lives in the house next to ours is also called as family can you define like that so here in taxonomic hierarchy family is nothing but it's a category taxonomic category which is represented by a group of related genera group of related genera that are more similar to each other when compared to the genera of other families means here the comparison or the similarity is observed between the group of genera not with the individual organisms such a group of genera which is having the similar more similar characters or the features and is called as a family particular family let's understand this family or the concept of family with live examples see the examples here the rice maize and the wheat these are the three different type of plants only right so rice scientific name is oryza sativa maize scientific name is triticum astium similarly the wheat is g maize if you observe their scientific name you already know that one the first component indicates generic name or the genus and second one is the species name means these three plants belongs to different genera rice belongs to oryza genus maize belongs to triticum genus and wheat belongs to 
sorry uh, this one is written in reverse manner this is wheat the wheat scientific name is triticum astivum and the mage scientific name is g mage so wheat belongs to triticum genus and the mage belongs to g genus name is even though they belongs to the different genera because of some similarities in reproductive as well as the vegetative properties of the features all of them are kept under higher category that is called as a family and the name of that family is poaceae so rice wheat and maize even though they belong to the different genera they are means because of some common similarities they belongs to the same family called as poaceae similarly the solanum tuberosum nothing but the potato and petunia mellifera melliflora nothing but petunia plant and then datura stramonium called as okay jimson weed see that is what the picture of potato and next one is petunia and third one is the jimson weed or the datura so these are the the three different type of plants they and now their scientific name let's see their scientific name the potato belongs to the genera solanum petunia belongs to the genera petunia and stramonium that is the jimson weed that belongs to a genera called as datura so even though they belong to different genera different genera so because of some similarities in their reproductive and in the vegetative features all of them belongs to one family and that family name is solanaceae what is the family name it is nothing but solanaceae next is similarly the gram and then the pea plant and then the soybean plant all these three belongs to even though they belong to the different uh, genera okay try to find out the scientific name of these three plants if you don't get means you can ask me also okay i'll give the answer sir but first you try to find out the scientific name of these three plants so all these three even though they belong to the different genera but they belong to a common uh, family and that family name is fabiaceae so gram plant pea plant and soybean plant belongs to one family that is called as fabiaceae remember these examples and to which family they belongs to that is very important for answering the neat and cet questions is it clear guys and these examples can also be asked in the pu board exam also so these families are made are they includes the different uh, genera and individuals of the different genera based on the similarities in uh, the two features what is that one means uh, reproductive and uh, vegetative features so here the families families in plants families in plants are based on so these are based on reproductive and vegetative reproductive and vegetative reproductive and as well as the vegetative features this is also a very important statement for the neat as well as the cet examination the families in taxonomic category in plants are based on which features of the plants means that is both reproductive as well as the vegetative features make a note of these examples now later we will discuss regarding uh, okay families of families in animals also so these are the examples of the families in the plants make a note of this one now so guys <coughs> so among the families say in particularly the plants the family names of the plants ends with a suffix which is nothing but aca if you observe the 
the family names of the plants for example poaceae fabaceae solanaceae so what is the common suffix among these family names means the aca means poaceae fabaceae solanaceae so aca is the a suffix for the the family names of plants remember it is very important one for the neat and steady examination right always the plant family names ends with the suffix known as aca similarly a family may include or subdivided into sub families then what the suffix of that sub family names ends with means say for example fabaceae is the family which is divided into a uh, three sub families that is papilinoidea <coughs> cesalpinoidea and uh, mimosoidea so in all these three what is the common suffix which by which the sub family name ends with means here that is oida o i d a e here also o i d a e o i d a e so the oida is the nothing but the suffix which forms the last part of the sub family names in plants or the sub family names of the plants always ends with the suffix known as oida so this is what regarding the family names and then the uh, the suffix by which the family name ends and then the if sub family is there means uh, so with with which suffix the sub family names ends in plants let's see okay the families in animals see for example the panthera tigris nothing but the tiger the panthera leopard nothing but the leopard and panthera leo nothing but the lion even though these three are uh, show some dissimilarities among them they belong to the same genera that is panthera so these panthera genus are the genera of organisms along with the other genera that is uh, felis see this felis domestica is the scientific name of uh, cat felis domestica is the scientific name of the cat the cat belongs to different genus that is uh, felis and this tiger lion and as well as the leopard belongs to the genus called as panthera so these two different genus are the genera so because of their some common characters uh, features they kept under uh, one family and that family name is felis so here sorry family name is felidae family name is felidae felis is the genus name to which the cats belongs and then panthera is the genus name to which tiger lion and leopard belongs but because of some common characters between these two genera so they belongs to a the common family that is called as felidae similarly so if i take the examples of dogs and as well as the foxes okay so they are different from these the panthera genus and then the felis and they do belong to an family called as canidae so why we have taken two examples of the families here means see here also you can observe the family names of the animals ends with a suffix called as ide that is i d a e i d a e is the common one right so so family names family names of animals animals ends with the suffix ends with the suffix i d a e that is ide so canide and then the felidae like that so family names of the animals ends with the suffix ide is it clear guys so this is what the discussion regarding the the family as a higher category in the taxonomical arrangement than the the previous one called as the genus is it clear guys till today until uh, this class we have discussed regarding the species genus and then the family make a note of this one now
the next category in the taxonomical arrangement is the order so what do you mean by order here means the order is the higher category in taxonomical arrangement than the previous one that is family so higher fam higher category than the family is order see what do you mean by order means order is a taxonomic category which represents a group of closely related families closely related families means here the similarities will be present between the individuals of one family to the the individual of the other families so examples let's take the examples of uh, uh, such orders of plants as well as the animals first one regarding the plants here the plants which belongs to the family is fabiaceae and in the rosaceae okay they do belong to a common order that order is nothing but here which is called as rosales that order is rosales so here fabaceae and rosaceae these are representing the family names these are the family names and both of them belong to a common order rosales fabaceae and rosaceae these two are the different families of the plants because of some similarities in some characters both families belong to the higher category called as rosales this rosales represents the order of both fabaceae as well as the rosaceae similarly the plants which belongs to the family convolvulaceae and in the solanaceae so both belongs to the common order the common order so what may be the name of that common order so nothing but the polymoniales both of them belongs to oh, polymoniales polymoniales see convolvulaceae and solanaceae due to some similarities or because of some common similarities between them I mean between these families they belong to a common order that is called as polymoniales here you may observe the order names of the plants ends with the common suffix that is nothing but the ales so so okay the order names in plants or of plants ends with the suffix ends with the suffix a l e s that is ales see your neat examination so let's see the examples of orders in animals in animals say for example <coughs> the felidae which includes uh, the cats and then canidae which include dogs and foxes this felidae includes this felidae includes what type of organisms uh, it includes cats lion tiger a leopard canidae which includes this one includes uh, dogs and foxes though they belong to a different family felidae is a one family and canidae is an another family due to some similarities they belong to the co common order and the name of that order is carnivora name of the order is carnivora so both of them belongs to a common order called as carnivora so the order of the tiger lion leopard and then the domestic and then the cat it is common that is carnivora next canidae in that dogs or the foxes all they belong to the same order that is carnivora only carnivora 
so these are the examples of uh, orders in the plants as well as the animals make a note of these points now in next class we are going to discuss regarding uh, the remaining taxonomic categories hope you have understood and enjoyed today's class okay we'll see you in the next class thank you guys